There's a lot to get to. Real quickly, you said John Kasich is a VP pick for Donald Trump. Why? All right, here's the thing. He's got to win Ohio. Kasich has proven he can't win anywhere else, but he could win Ohio handily. He's a popular governor there. I think, though, that we have to look at this VP thing. There's two separate lists. One is a bunch of politicians, Kasich, I think, is one, who will not take it with Trump. They will not run with Trump, Harris, because they look upon Trump as a loser in November. And they don't want to be on the ticket with them and go down the drain with them. Sure. So the other candidates on the other list mm -hmm. that you hear about, Newt Gingrich, right. Chris Christie, Rick Perry, they're all dead enders. They have no political future other than Which being is on why the Trump should go to the outside, pick Ben Carson, and run as a pure anti establishment candidate, neutralize the race issue, and offer a forward looking. Ben Carson says he doesn't want to do anything. No, they say, they all that. say no until <laughs> they're asked. Serendipity Terry says uh, Newt Gingrich, which is one of the ones you chose. All right, now I, I want to move on to this idea of where we go next with the general election. And uh, ahead of that, Pat, is this meeting on Thursday within the GOP. Uh, some chippy words between House Speaker Paul Ryan and Donald Trump this past week. And now they're going to have this meeting with leadership on the Hill on Thursday. And then I understand they're going to have like a break-off meeting with just the two men, Ryan and Trump and Reince Priebus. Your thoughts on what we could see? Well, I'm, I, think it, they, I think everybody's interest, those three of them, is to come out of there with some harmony and, uh, and some agreement. Um, Ryan is giving cover. He's got some, look, he's got some problems with Trump's positions, but the problem is he is thinking establishment. Trump is the anti establishment That's where the country and the Republican Party are. So there's got to be some give here. But Trump is the nominee. So uh, I expect they will come out of there. I think the real problem they've got to address is, the, uh, is the, what I call the, 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 the contentions that are all fable. That the electoral college is a lock. It's always locked till it's unlocked. That's what happened in 92. It was a mm. Republican lock. The, the, the House and Senate will go down the drain. There is no statistical evidence or any polling to suggest that that's true under any circumstances. And by the way, in 1972 and 1984, when 49 states were lost by okay. the losing candidate, the Democrats lost, won two seats in both elections in the Senate and won. All right, Doug, I want to talk to you about what's coming up on Tuesday. Sure. Primaries uh, in Nebraska and West Virginia. You know, there's some questions, and I'm seeing it in Twitter. Well, if Donald Trump is the presumptive nominee, why do the primaries matter? He hasn't gotten to 1237 yet. Correct. And he will get there. The other one is in West Virginia, where I think Hillary's likely... Not to certain, lose. likely to lose to Bernie Sanders, which further prolongs the race as we were talking about before. All right, my big before. question of the hour, what does Bernie Sanders really want? He wants influence, he wants more money, and he wants to control the platform. And, wow. like I said... Is he running for president yes. or a CEO? Because no, I can't tell from what you just and said. And we haven't even mentioned it, but Bernie Sanders, who blew it in the first debate, Secretly is counting on the FBI primary being the thing that trips well, his wife her said it, up. What? His wife said his it. His wife is, who's become more active as a spokeswoman and very effective, by the way. Hmm. Yeah, I think he's thinking, hey, if she gets hit with something, I'm the nominee. Final.